Bonjour à tous. Merci de participer à cette session. Je m'appelle Nava Levy. Je peux dire ce que je veux en français, mais avec beaucoup de fautes et mauvais accent. So this is why I'm going to switch to English if it's okay. I think it will be easier for everyone. So as I said, my name is Nava Levy. I'm very excited to be here in the Big Data and AI Paris, talking about one of my favorite topics, future ready, future stores. A few words about myself. So I'm a developer advocate for data science and machine learning operations at Redis. Redis is the super fast, uh, super popular uh, open source in-memory database. We are also home for Redis Stack, which extends to modern data models and use cases, and Redis Enterprise. So without further ado, let's see what we are going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the challenges of deploying real-time AI, which as we'll see are the modern or the future use cases, the, the use cases that we see more and more today. And for the future, we'll talk about what is the feature store, which is emerging to be the cornerstone of machine learning operations platform, how to build the future-ready feature store. We'll go over uh, briefly case studies and how to get started with feature stores with Redis. And then summary and Q&A. So here we can see some of the prevalent use cases of AI in machine learning in production. We can see that they cover you know, every vertical from financial to medical to entertainment to retail and many types of, uh, of uh, use cases from fraud detection to video recommendation to visual inspection and manufacturing, online advertising, speech recognition, and many, many more. And we see that over time, many of these are real-time use cases or becoming real-time. They are the use cases of the future. Now, the, the problem with uh, deploying machine learning to production, and especially those modern use cases or real-time use cases, that they are very, it's very hard and complex. And as a result, many companies are struggling with deploying them. A lot of machine learning models never make it to production. And some, even though they make it to production, after a while, they crash and burn. And this has led to the development of what we call MLOps, machine learning operations platform which are very similar to DevOps. They bridge the gap between what a data scientist develops in his Jupyter notebook, what it takes to deploy a real use case in production. And feature stores, as I said earlier, are emerging to be the cornerstone, the heart of those machine learning operations platforms. And why is that? If we look at the, at the, the pipeline of machine learning, a typical pipeline of machine learning from scoping to data management, to modeling, you know, training the model, deploying the model, monitoring the model, then the data scientists spend most of their time on data management. Uh, some say 80%, here we have a survey of 66%, but it's really most of the time, it's not training the model. So data collection, pre-processing, transforming, uh, and feature engineering take the majority of the data, data science time. And as a result, it's a huge bottleneck for, product, for productizing your machine learning models. Here, before we, I move on, I just want to do a quick level set, okay? So feature stores store features, and features are just a fancy way of describing the data inputs or variables that we use uh, for, you know, we input them into the machine learning model to make predictions, okay? So if uh, uh, we want to predict the price of a house, then a size of the house or what floor it is on is an example of features. And feature engineering is the very long and costly process of transforming raw data into digestible features for machine learning model. So machine learning model doesn't understand if we say, uh, does it have a porch, yes or no, but it does understand zero and one and floating, floating numbers. So we want to transform the raw data uh, the tabular data, whether it's categorical data or if it's uh, numerical data into a feature vector or, or floating numbers. So this is really a feature engineering. And this is something that the machine learning model can understand. And when we talk about the future ready feature store, so what, what do we mean? What are the key considerations? So here I have I listed some of the important considerations. The feature store has to support any feature type. And when I, what I mean by feature type, uh, it, could, it could mean a few things. It could mean not just tabular data, but also 
embedding unstructured data. So this is really, this is also so important. But in this respect, I wanted to focus on things related to the modern use cases, uh, real-time use cases. So it's not enough to support batch features, you know, from your data, data warehouse that store the historical or static data. We also need to store streaming feature from streaming sources as IoT sensors, click streams, or transaction streams, as well as real-time features, which are features that can only be calculated using real-time transformations on data that is available only on the inference request itself. So if I'm talking, let's say, on the fraud detection use case, so a, a real-time feature would be the delta between the transaction that I want to check if it's fraudulent or not, and the average size of transactions uh, in the past, you know, the less, let's say, the last three transactions. So this delta can only be uh, calculated at inference request, at the prediction request. And all of this has to be really, really fast for real-time use cases. And uh, the more the more real time it is, okay. So we can we can have a real time or an online uh, use case just with batch features, um, and so we calculate we 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 serve the features to the model as the user interacts with the with the app with the app or the website. But it will have data that is not fresh and live. It will have it will have data maybe from uh, you know three hours ago, maybe from last night. And 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 this isn't as useful for product recommendation for fraud detection, uh, etc. Uh, if we have streaming features, more you know from the last let's say from the last uh, minute or from the last seconds, then it's again that the predictions are going to be much more powerful. Uh, and I know that it uh, maybe it makes sense or doesn't make sense that the transactions that I did are from Japan, even though I live in Israel. Okay. Yesterday, I, I, I lived in Israel, but maybe I, I flew today uh, to Japan and now I'm doing transaction. It does make sense. So it really depends what, what is the latest, the freshest data. Uh, and real-time features are, are even more powerful. And even though it's much more difficult to uh, uh, perform, to calculate predictions uh, using real-time features and streaming features compared to just using batch features, the value, the value for, to the organization, the value to the user uh, is much, much higher. It's exponentially higher. And this is why uh, companies do everything they can to support uh, those type of features. Um, and it has, needs to support any use case. So as we said, there are use cases that can be uh, used uh, using, uh, uh, you know, batch predictions performed once every few hours, once a night. Uh, but more and more of the use cases are becoming real-time. They are performed online as the user interacts with the website or app, and they're using the freshest, most live uh, data. And when we talk about any use case, it could be use case that, that needs to uh, features in, in, in supported in different data structures. Maybe it's probability, probabilistic data structure. Maybe it's a sorted set. Maybe it's hashes. So, uh, the feature store has to be flexible enough to support any of those uh, use cases. Uh, it has to be to be able to scale to any scale that we need. Future ready feature store. If the if the use cases are successful, then the company and this is our experience. The company grows much faster. The users, many more users, and much more data. So the feature set is growing. So it has to support any number of uh, uh, of predictions or queries per second, any number of uh, use cases. Some companies have hundreds, hundreds of use cases in production and billions of features and many, many hundreds of data scientists working on it and to any uh, size data set, uh, terabytes and more. So this is the any scale. So this is like the three uh, basic uh, uh, prerequisites to support uh, um, any use case of the future, the future ready feature store. But this isn't enough. Uh, we, we want also um, it to be done cost effectively. Why? Because a feature store, which is the cornerstone of machine learning operations, can be a substantial uh, uh, um, part of the TCO, total cost of operation. So, and specifically the online feature store, and I'm going to talk more about the online feature store, is going to is um, can, can cost 50 percent or more of the total MLOps uh, platform TCO. So it's really important 
that we scale cost effectively linearly and uh, horizontally and this is uh, so this is another thing that is very important for future ready features so it could be the difference is spending a million dollars or half a million dollars okay and the, and the difference could be substantial in terms of is it a viable use case is the roi is, uh, is is substantial or or it's not a viable use case it should be a functional rich feature store. So we see that feature store started with, um, you know, uh, having a very basic set of features. And, and as, uh, as they evolve, they have more and more uh, capabilities or functionalities. So for instance, some feature store already support uh, performing or calculating the, fe the, 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 the features, you know, doing the uh, engineering inside the feature store. So this is something that you know can be very powerful. Some of them enable monitoring, you know, very extensive monitoring of the data, of the features, the distribution, the input, the output, and they allow enable us to detect you know performance issues both on the data science side on and the operational side. So um, a functional reach is important and it doesn't have to be a, a feature store that already has all possible uh, functionality which we, we don't we can't really anticipate all possible functionalities but it has to be a, a feature store that has the potential to evolve it's component based it's all the time evolving if it's an open source uh, feature store it has a lot of uh, support from the community and the cadence the innovation is is very high and it's and it's if it doesn't have all the features that they have it, it's on the roadmap and lastly, it's enterprise ready. So enterprise ready means a lot, you know, a lot of, of uh, capabilities. Uh, so um, five nine availability, not having any downtime is really important uh, for enterprise. So maybe now you are a startup and you're growing very fast, but as, as uh, you look into the future, uh, you'll have larger and larger customers. You yourself become enterprise. There are compliance regulations, privacy, security, AI regulations that are not yet enforced, but will be in a few years' time. Uh, that, uh, so we also have to pay attention to that. Uh, persistence is important, so no data is lost. Uh, Multi-region support, multi-cloud support, again, to be cost-effective, we don't want to, lock, to be locked in, in into any cloud. So a feature store that can be deployed on any cloud and maybe also on-premise is very important. Um, so how do we go about uh, building the future ready feature store? So first, before we do that, let's first um, look at uh, more closely at what is a feature store. So a feature store, which stores the features and features are, as we said, a fancy way of describing the data inputs for the machine learning model, sits between the raw data and the model. And uh, so we have the raw data, we do feature engineering, we ingest the data into the feature store. We extract those features either for training or for predictions. Uh, um, and, and for, for real-time use, use case, we need to extract those features very, very fast. So the challenges, the key challenges, the feature store address, and there are more challenges. I just put the top, top three. Uh, the first one, serving features for real-time predictions with low latency. And this is uh, arguably the most important um, a challenge that uh, feature store have to address because without it there is no use case. If we can't uh, serve features fast enough for predictions, then either the customer will just wait if it's a fraud detection, you know, uh, for uh, the transaction to be approved or not, and it's just going to leave the site, or we will approve uh, the um, um, the transaction, even though we didn't run a, a fraud detection on it, which is also bad. So, um, so, so serving feature for real time uh, prediction is very, very important. The second is avoiding training serving skew. So, what uh, we what uh, we found is that there is a, a a gap between the pipeline, the training pipeline, and the serving pipeline that leads to um, to a skew in terms of accuracy between what we see during training and what we see during production. Those slight differences, those translations between you know, a, a Python or, or Java or, or defining the transformation slightly different uh, in, uh, in, in Pandas versus a, a, a SQL is makes a, can make a, a, a small differences 
that make a, a have a big impact on accuracy. So we can have a 95% accuracy in training, and then in production, it's 85%. Now, not everything is due to um, the difference between uh, the training and production. Some, some of it are related to data drift and concept drift, but whatever we can, uh, we can control uh, in terms of the definitions of features and, and, and ex executing the transformation that we want to fix. And lastly, resharing of features between machine, machine learning use cases. As we said, creating those features, feature engineering them takes a very long time. And, uh, and the idea is that not every data scientist will reinvent the wheel uh, for when he wants he or she wants to define the features. Uh, there are many features, like canonical features, that are common across many use cases. For instance, the age of the customer or how long it's been, uh, it's been a, the, a customer within the company. And uh, it's important for fraud, it's important for uh, predicting when uh, uh, the customer is going to churn or when is, uh, he, can, uh, he can move from, uh, to a paid subscription. So, so uh, sharing features between machine learning use cases can reduce cost and, and, uh, um, and in, increase the speed of deployment of uh, of, of machine learning models to production. And as we said, feature engineering is the huge bottleneck. So uh, we are, I'm gonna focus now on the, on the real-time aspects uh, of uh, serving features for real-time predictions with low latency, because as we said, this is really important. And when we look at the data pipeline for AI ML in production, um, let's look a little, a little bit closer, closer. So we see, that the sources can be batch sources, like the data warehouse for historical uh, features and the user profile, et cetera, and streaming sources. Uh, as I said, the last transactions, quick stream, uh, uh, IoT uh, inputs, uh, server logs, et cetera. And, uh, and then we do feature engineering. And the feature engineering, we can, uh, it's very important to know, you know, what are we using for the transport? Is it Kafka? Is it Kinesis? Is it Redis streams? And for the uh, then we need to do the computation. So what are we using for to do the the transformation of you know the feature engineering the transformation of the feature? So are we using Flink or Spark? All every choice we make uh, will have an impact. And then when we look at a, a feature, a feature serving, how do we extract uh, those uh, features from the uh, data stores that is used to store the features? So are we using uh, AWS Lambda function? Are we using an HTTP um, server? Are we using a, a Java gRPC server? So uh, if we're using a Python HTTP server, uh, our friends, it's FIST, which FIST is, is a very popular open source feature. So found that uh, using a Python HTTP server is much slower compared to a Java gRPC server. So every choice we make will have an impact. And finally, for the actual predictions, so uh, is our model optimized? Is it, is it small enough? Are we using accelerators like TPU or GPUs? Uh, what, what serving engine are we using? Oh, is it a TensorFlow serving? Is it a NVIDIA Triton? Every choice we make will, will, will have an impact on the end-to-end -end latency, okay? And the, what we found that the most important uh, for this data pipeline and, and the, where there is the, 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 the most source of optimization, and the most uh, potential uh, for saving uh, on, on latency and cost is the, the, the data store or the online stores um, that we, we use, we use to, to store the features, what we call the online feature store. And uh, it's the most critical component for real-time data layer for machine learning and AI. And most often, um, Redis is chosen for this component. And the reason that Redis is, cho is chosen for this component is because of the performance of Redis. And here you don't have to take my word for it because it's such a critical component, because it has such a potential for improvement, uh, reducing the latency, reduce, removing the bottlenecks, reducing costs. Many companies uh, perform thorough benchmarks before they select this component. And then some of them share it with the community, which is I think very nice, so I, we can share it back. So here we have a number of uh, benchmarks uh, that you can see how uh, Redis uh, compares to other feature stores. And consistently, you can see that Redis is the most cost effective and, and has the best performance. So it's in terms of latency, 
the delay that is measured in milliseconds in terms of the throughputs, how many queries per second, and in terms of the cost. So for instance, uh, Tekton, which is one of the popular uh, commercial feature store, they compared to uh, DynamoDB, and they found that Redis is three times faster than a DynamoDB and consistently faster, not just on the median, but also the tail latency, things P99, but it's also 14X less expensive, okay? So it's not only a better performance, but it's also much, much, much less expensive. And this is, you, you see it consistently uh, in many, many benchmarks. This is another example from a cash up, block cash up uh, application. Once they moved from DynamoDB to Redis, they shifted the entire latency curve. So the P99 dropped from 30 milliseconds to 10 milliseconds. And the average latency dropped from 10 milliseconds to five milliseconds. This is really important. And every millisecond counts, okay? When it comes to real-time AI use cases, those modern future use, case, use cases that are more and more deployed today, every millisecond counts. And it's not just about um, a latency, it's uh, also the flexibility that Redis enables supporting different data types and structures has a, a, a lot of potential of, of increasing uh, developers' productivity for different use cases, modern use cases, but also for reducing uh, cost, reducing memory footprint, reducing latency, uh, improving CPU efficiency. This is from DoorDash. You can see that by, just by moving from a flat key value pairs to Redis hashes, which is one of the many data structures supported by Redis. They uh, improved by 40% or in 5x the CPU efficiency, 40% the memory footprint and, and with the latency. So if we look at uh, what is, um, you know, what are the key, key considerations from an online feature store for a future ready feature store, then we see all of these uh, requirements. Uh, we talked about different data types and structures. We talked about the scale, the low latency, the high throughput, say up to 200 million operations per second at sub milliseconds latency. And for a single prediction, we need many, many uh, operations per second. Just extracting a feature vector and calculating the real time features, we need many, many uh, operations per second. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's very highly persistent. This is we, uh, this, all of this is supported with the Redis open source. And once the, the company scales, the use case scales, or for a specific vertical, like financial vertical, telecom vertical, has healthcare vertical, which are, we need an enterprise ready feature store. Then we also have all these other capabilities and functionalities that are supported by Redis enterprise, like the 24 seven support, the fully managed service, high availability of, of five line availability, globally distributed, uh, building durability and disaster recovery, uh, scale cost effectively. So this is really important and I will uh, talk about it a little bit more. Uh, we can save up to 80% of costs using Redis and Flash on large data sets. So when the data sets go, get into the terabytes, uh, so um, up to now I talk, I focus more on the real time aspect. As, but as you saw, you saw the feature store have more requirements and they address more challenges. And so we see that the feature store is not made just by, as a, with the online store. More recent feature store added side by side to the online feature store and offline feature store, where the offline feature store take care of the training and the online feature store for the online predictions. So feature store is emerging as a new logical component, which has two manifestations, offline and, and online. And uh, where well, the offline a feature store can be, we know, with the Google BigQuery, Snowflake, uh, Amazon Redshift, you know, any data warehouse kind of data store. The online feature store, we see that uh, uh, most often is, is selected with Redis and Redis Enterprise. And um, the way that uh, we can address with the feature store, the other two challenges is that the, uh, the feature definition of a feature store is defined in the registry on the logical level. Uh, so the same definition is used for, for both uh, training and for, for production. And there is no, so this, this, this minimizes uh, the skew that we saw between training and production. Now, once the feature definition is, uh, is registered uh, in, in, in the registry, then 
it can be used for another use cases, but the same data scientist that created this, this feature, but also by another data scientist that didn't create this feature because he can find it in the registry and then reuse it for his or her use cases. Uh, these are examples of companies leveraging Redis and Redis Enterprise to successfully deploy online chip feature store for real time. They cover you know, every geography, every vertical, uh, you know, from uh, food tech to, to ride hailing to finance vertical. And we see that all of them are very successful companies and using Redis uh, with large data sets at scale. Uh, here are examples for uh, two use cases that are using Redis Enterprise uh, for the high scale uh, use cases for many uh, real time use cases. One is iFood, which is a food tech company, and the other is Gojek, which is started as a ride hailing company, but now it's really a super app. And uh, iFood is uh, has 80% of the market in Brazil. It's a very successful company. And Gojek have uh, uh, close to 200 million users. And iFood is using a built your own feature store with Redis Enterprise as an online feature store. And Gojek used the FIST open source feature store uh, with Redis Enterprise. So we will see later that there are many ways of getting uh, to your feature store. And I will discuss it uh, briefly. We can build from scratch like iFood. We can uh, start with open source. So the, the most popular open source feature store are Fist and LinkedIn Feather. Uh, or we can buy or subscribe to a commercial feature store like Tekton or H2O, Quark and Cascada. Um, here we have a, a few tutorials uh, to start with open source feature store, which is the easiest. You can do it you know, a, a few minutes uh, after you listen to this uh, presentation online or when you come back uh, home uh, from the conference. Um, so you can see here we have a, a tutorial that explains how to install FIST with uh, Redis. And it's also available in Colab and it's very, very easy. Here we have a, another tutorial that explains how to use a FIST on Google Cloud with Redis Enterprise. And afterwards you can look at the recording. We'll also share the links to the tutorials in the description. Uh, for uh, for this video, here you can see Fist on on Azure with Redis, and it's already pre-integrated to the uh, Azure data and AI ecosystem. So if you are already on on Azure, so this is a really good option. Here we have uh, LinkedIn Feather on Azure with Redis. Feather is also integrated to, into the Azure data and AI ecosystem. Both of them support enterprise tiers, Redis enterprise tiers for high availability and persistence and, and the geo distribution. And so this basically the last uh, slide of my presentation, we saw why feature stores are so important and how they are becoming the cornerstone of machine learning operations, why they are critical for you know, the modern use cases, those real-time AI use cases, uh, how to go about building a future-ready feature store and what is a future-ready feature store. And we went quickly over how to get started with feature stores uh, with Redis. So uh, this is uh, basically the last slide, and I will take now uh, questions. Thank you very much uh, for joining this session. Merci beaucoup.